five, six, seven, eight. Digger. Digger Digger Styles. Scooper. Scooper. (laughs) Digger. Scooper. (laughs) Close enough. Oh, let's talk about Jason Styles. Finally, here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Gilmore to Say with Tara and Haley. I'm Tara. This is Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi, Tara. We're here to talk about Jason Styles. But before we do, I actually, I was listening to our episode for season four that we released last week. Um, I uh-huh. listened to it today because it's going to be uploaded soon. And we were talking about the finale of season four and the finale of season two in which one we felt had higher stakes. Season four, of course, the stakes feel a lot higher. And But moreover, which one we felt was like, better or which one we Mm -hmm. preferred and we both kind of landed on season two but in listening to us I realized that season two and season four kind of present the same stakes just differently like Lori kisses someone that we've been anticipating her kissing for a while and then Lorelai kisses Luke which we've anticipated her doing for a while and then in season two finale Lorelai sleeps with a past flame that like feels very familiar and feels like something's gonna work not realizing that he still has someone else on the hook and Rory does the same in kind of a different way she sleeps with a Mm -hmm. past love Ooh, they the flip flop. Yeah, I didn't realize that until like I heard us talking, and I was like, "Wow, we taught me something. We taught me something." <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that when we do that. Me too. That happens all the time, though. We're like either listening to like the Gilmore to Say episodes or the Patreon episodes. As we're talking, I'll be like, wait, 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 but I have something else to add based on what you guys said. I I thought of something new. I've been doing that a lot (laughs) with and just like her as well. Like I will listen back and be like, oh man, I wish I said this. I mean, I've been doing that with our show for years. I'm like, man, I wish I said that. But yeah, it like prompts a new thought in me and I'm like, damn. Yeah. (laughs) We need to do Gilmore Revisited Revisited. (laughs) We do. We might need to do that, honestly. Yeah. It'd be fun. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out before we really got into the meat and potatoes of this episode, which of course is Jason. Yeah. I will say in like reflecting on that episode, there was so much about season four that I was like, oh my God, we should talk about that and that. But I feel like if you go back and listen to all of season four on Patreon, you kind of get all of the thoughts we were trying to distill there. It's so hard to take the summary from 22 episodes where we did like hour and a half long episodes and put it in like an hour and a half long episode on here. Well, especially Um, because we did it over the course of what? We do it over the Since course of like two or three months, four months. Yeah. That's a long time. And like, I forgot a lot about stuff in the beginning, yeah. which I rem- I was reminded as we were like making notes for the Jason episode. Yeah, totally. Um, but before we get into the Jason episode, I do want to mention the May book club picks, which I am so excited about. Yes, um, tell us, tell me. For <laughs> I will tell you. Which <laughs> I already talked about. <laughs> I already talked about for where you read out a follow because we were reading Jessica Simpson's memoir mm-hmm. last month and we're reading Britney Spears this month I fucking loved Jessica Simpson's memoir I need you to listen to it you texted me about it a lot you were like I'm loving this it's so good it made me love her so much more because we love her like nothing but a t-shirt yes this is how you have to listen to it nothing but a t-shirt on but I became so enthralled with the way that she was telling it because she reads her audiobook it's so emotional there's so many moments in it that like made me hate people even more than I already did like Mm -hmm. celebrities one man in particular who plays it's not Nick Lachey but also Nick Lachey did you realize that she was 18 and he was 26 I didn't know that I didn't know that either until I read this no but his name is um redacted he plays okay. guitar though and we hate him okay john mayer <laughs> i didn't know they were a thing yeah oh you don't remember that terrible article that he like where he gave the interview t- saying the most like disgusting things about her saying she was like sexual napalm uh it it this made you dislike him all the more because it really felt like they were like breaking up uh like he would break up with her mm-hmm. to torture himself to like write better and then get back together with her for it was like she was like his muse and he was torturing himself through her right it was ew chaotic and gross and uh but she was very honest like she talked a lot about like having like emotional affairs and talked about being an alcoholic and like all of these things that she went through like her family struggles and one of the most shocking things i've ever heard is talking about the death of her cousin um Mm. early on i was crying a lot of it it's but it's so good i highly recommend it yeah. it's uplifting it's really heartbreaking but it was so good so if you have any interest in it 
highly recommend listening to it. And you were the one that told me though, because we're reading um, for where you read out follow is reading The Woman and Me by Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. You were the one that told me the audiobook was Michelle Williams. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Which I didn't know. So I'm super, super excited to dive into that. I can't wait to hear how you feel about it. I haven't listened or read, um, but I watched a lot of discourse on it via TikTok when the book came out because it was explosive. So very intrigued to hear how you feel about it. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, But for reading is sexy, we are going to be reading a book called How to End a Love Story by Yuling Kuang. It is her debut novel. Mm. And it is, I'll go ahead and say, if you are someone who needs to check trigger warnings before you read a book, I would definitely check them for this book because it really deals really heavily with grief and uh, things related to that. But if you don't, I wouldn't. Because I think this is one of those books that you don't want to be spoiled on things for. You kind of want like the shock factor of it or like Mm. the gasp of it all, if you will. Because this book is about Helen and Grant who went to high school together and share kind of a unfortunate event in their lives that has connected them. And the book is much later in their lives um, when Helen has a best-selling YA series that is being adapted into a TV show, Grant ends up in the writer's room. Mm -hmm. So this book takes place in a TV writer's room. Um, And I won't tell you what connects them, but what connects them really makes this the most like believable enemies to lovers in a contemporary romance. Because usually it's just like rivals to lovers. I mean, enemies to lovers needs like a needs like a dagger it needs to be fantasy they need to be like truly hateful and it's hard to do it when you're like both accountants Mm -hmm. um you just kind of like dislike each other in the workplace but this one truly is like enemies to lovers it's very angsty it's very hot but it's really really good it deals a lot with like complicated family relationships okay um so i feel like people who like that lorelei Emily struggle I think will like this because they both have that um it's kind of a second chance romance but not at all but they are both writers which I feel like a lot of people who like Gilmore Girls will like especially having um a writer's room uh tv as the backdrop for this yeah um but Yuling Kuang this is her debut novel but what is so interesting about it she will be on the podcast later this month But she is adapting Emily Henry's two of her books. So People We Meet on Vacation, she is adapting the screenplay because she's a screenwriter and director, which leads to Beach Read, where she is adapting the screenplay and directing it. Wow. And those are two of my favorite books, as all of you know. And I was really worried because I had never read or uh, experienced any of her art before. But after reading this book, I feel really comfortable Mm. with the fact that she is adapting my favorite book into a movie. That's how much I liked it. That's great. It's really good. Her voice is really new and fun, and I'm really excited to talk to her about it. But um, yeah, very angsty love story. And it's one of those ones you're like, how is this going to end? There's no possible way they could overcome what's keeping them apart. Um, But they do because it's a romance. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. I think that was the book I chose for book of the month or one of them. Yes. So I'm excited to read it. Yeah. And there is a little treat in the book. One of my friends and I were reading it at the same time and she was like, Haley, get to page 94. And I got there. Or maybe it's page 91. Regardless, it was one of those. But when I got there, I was like, ah. So I think you will all feel the same. I'm excited. Great picks <laughs> once again. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to everyone about it because I feel like this is one that will be particularly divisive maybe mm-hmm. or everyone's going to love it. We'll see what happens, but um, we'll be talking to Yulene next month, and uh, that's the book club. That's if you would like Gilmore to read, you can join us on Fable. Fab, can't wait. Yeah. Do you think Jason reads? No. <laughs> you don't think Jason listened to Jessica Simpson? I think Jason maybe reads the morning paper. Yeah. But can you imagine if Jason's favorite song was "With You" by Jessica Simpson? Can you imagine if just (laughs) Lorelai comes downstairs after spending the night by herself in her own room and Jason's making breakfast with nothing but a t-shirt on? With nothing but a t-shirt on, (laughs) playing with you by Jessica Simpson. I can see him doing that. I can see him having like a like a closeted obsession with someone like Jessica Simpson, like with their music. You know what I mean? That he just lets loose when he's making breakfast, cook it in the kitchen. No, he seems more of like the he would be into the John Mayer of it all, admittedly. Well, but let's see. Let's find out. So something fun that Haley and I wanted to do today, of course, is to break down the character of Jason. We talked about it a lot 
on the show. We didn't want to do it until after season four had wrapped until we had done the rewatch because we felt like it was kind of unfair to give our unsolicited thoughts. Not that they're unsolicited. Yeah. This is our podcast, but to give like our raw thoughts when we haven't watched him in a while and when we had talked about season four not necessarily being a season we watch often and then watching it with such a discerning eye i think this was the right time to do a little breakdown of justin styles a little breakdown because we know him we've met him we've seen this a million times of course but it's so different to go through the seasons like as we do on patreon with like such intensity like really fine tooth comb through every storyline um And I feel like I felt one way about Jason when we started, one way about him in the middle, and a different way now, like, throughout it. So if we had done a Jason episode before this, I think it would have been completely different than post-season four watching. Totally. I'm excited to get into it. So we've we've decided to do this breakdown, but then... The latter half of our episode is going to be talking about Jason's green flags, his beige flags, and his red flags. And I have a feeling that we're going to have a lot of the same qualities. I'm just curious to see which buckets we each put them into. Me too. Because like at first I was like, oh, should we have like done it like kind of like vocabulary, like where you like pick them all and then we like to like distribute them differently. Yeah. But I kind of like the idea that we are bringing very different things to each of the buckets because I think I'm going to have some red flags that might either be beige or green flags for you. I know. Well, I had a tough time organizing them. Uh, For some of the beige flags, I put them there being like, oh, for some people, this might be a green flag or a red flag. But I guess that's why they're beige. I guess green and red makes beige. I didn't know that. I don't, I don't, I don't color wise, I don't think that's true. But if, you, well, if you don't know what a beige flag is, it's kind of like not good, not bad. It's just, you kind of think about it and you're like, huh. Yeah. It's just one of those things that you notice that you pick up on and you're like, I'm going to clock yeah. that. Yeah. It's kind of like a fact about someone that kind of makes you go, huh. Mm hmm. Huh <laughs> flags, if you will. Huh flags. <laughs> I love it. But huh is not a color. <laughs> it's not, but I guess it's beige. It's beige, oh. which is funny because you and I are both wearing beige today. I'm wearing white. Is that white? It looks beige on um on Riverside. Oh, does it? No, it's white. Yeah. It's like a cream. Mine's, My mom. Yeah, that's what I mean. Christmas. It's kind of like off white. Yeah, I feel like it's yeah. We're yeah. both wearing off white today. <laughs> Perfect for the beige <laughs> we're, flags. We're both half flags. <laughs> I think I I evenly distributed them though. Like I'm not looking at this and seeing like a really strong category with a ton. All of them yeah. have like an equal amount of flags. Same. And mine wasn't on purpose. So it was just kind of. No, me either. I just looked up. and, and I was like, sure oh, I forgot things. Hello. Oh, yeah. I think have. that we're also going to have things on here that the other person maybe forgot. So it'll be interesting to see where we place Which is the best things. part of it. I know. I love it. I love when we do that. But let's go back to the beginning. So our first sighting of Jason was in The Hobbit, The Sofa and Digger Styles. He looked like a thumb without his beard. Oh my god. He was yeah, he really did. He just came in looking like Chris a thumb. Eichmann. Yeah, but his for our first Lorelai and Jason interaction doesn't happen until an affair to remember. Yeah. Because for those of you who might need a reminder, Jason kind of ruffles the feathers of Emily because she wants to throw a launch party, which is what she always does for Richard's business, and he wants to take them all to Atlantic City and She ends up canceling this party that Lorelai was supposed to cater, and she hears about the way that Jason kind of stomped all over Emily's, you know, what what her role is and how devastated Emily is. And so she goes and confronts him at his office, and it is spicy. Rather spicy. What's interesting about Jason, though, is, like, he's not immediately introduced to us as a Lorelai love interest. No, not at all. It's kind of what we were talking about in the last episode about season four kind of introduces this new sort of expanded Richard and Emily storyline where they have a storyline entirely dependent on themselves Mm -hmm. and not interacting with Lorelai and Rory. And this is kind of that first entry into that in the early season four is because Jason shows up and he wants to work with Richard. I really, really want to piss off my father. Is that what he says? I really, really want to piss off my dad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so we don't know for a second that he's even going to be someone that Lorelai is um, connected to. Not at all. I mean, they make mention of him. And she's like, oh, digger. Like, they kind of lay the the breadcrumbs towards yeah. the two of them connecting and eventually becoming 
a couple, but that's not initially why he's brought into the story. No. And I find that to be so fascinating because every other person that Lorelai has been affiliated with, maybe with the exception of Luke, because Luke is a fixture in the town, but they've yeah. all been presented as Lorelai love interests. Christopher, of course, because of the history and Max as Rory's teacher who then takes an immediate interest in Lorelai. So yeah. it's it's very interesting to have Jason introduced into the story and into the lives of Emily and Richard and kind of causing conflict there first before he and Lorelai ever become yeah. a thought. Which is really interesting because I just thought about this, probably something that a lot of people have realized, is that uh, the first time we see Lorelai and uh, Digger, Jason, together is when she goes to his office and he's like, Lorelai Gilmore, you've grown up. And it was like maybe the grossest thing he says the whole season. Yeah. Um, but she goes there to defend her family. Mm -hmm. She's furious at him for making her mom feel irrelevant and making her feel so bad. But we turn back around to the end of the season and she's mad at them um, and Jason's going to sue them and she still sides with them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like feels like it comes full circle that like she starts it to piss them off and she ends it because she's suing them. Yeah. And I want to put a pin in that because of a question we're going to kind of ask a little bit later on because I think Ooh. that he plays much more of a role in Lorelai's life than just as a love interest and a source of conflict with her parents. So Ooh, interesting. We'll come back to that. But <laughs> our last sighting of Jason, of course, is in Marine Coats and Recipes. We talked about it in our last episode and we also talked about it on Patreon. Like, where the hell did he go? Because we never where see him Jason in season go? five. His story is kind of, I don't know if I want to say cut short, but he makes this return only to just disappear and vanish from the story again. And it's like, didn't Into we the need bathroom? that? He went to the bathroom and he never came out. It really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because like he comes, he's like so adamant. He's not going to lose Laura like Gilmore again. Like, absolutely not. He's going to yeah. fight for this. And then he asks Luke where the bathroom is. And and then in uh, season five, episode one, Suki apparently called him and said that his apartment was on fire. And that was the last we ever heard of Jason. Do you think that maybe something happened between season four and season five where Chris Eichmann couldn't do the show. Mm. And that's why they explained it away. I'm really curious to know if we, you know, happen to talk to one of the writers, because I know we've talked to Sheila, who was seasons two through four. And then we've got Stan, who came on the scene in season five. So I'm curious yeah. if... I wonder if he knows. Either of them would know, because... I do feel like they left it a little open-ended. It's a little out of character. Not that we needed more from him, but especially because he comes back in the revival. He's in that yeah, very first. Yeah, but that feels like more because he ends up in the Amy Sherman Palladino universe. He does. It's true. She but becomes a key player for her. I'm, but, really, though, I'm really curious if that was the original plan. It totally could have been. The only reason that I'm um, like leaning towards the side of like they just did away with him is because so much of his storyline is so underdeveloped or rather so much of his relationship with Lorelai is really underdeveloped it's kind of just like pockets of the two of them throughout their relationship mm. it doesn't really feel like we're building a relationship necessarily mm. which we can get into a little bit later yeah but it kind of just feels like a stopgap between the beginning of season four to the end of season four where like her and Luke end up together. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if in season five they were like, yeah, let's just cut out all the conflict with other people. All of the conflict needs to exist between the two of them. Let's stop bringing in outside forces mm. until they get to six and they're like only outside forces. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I wonder because like that's kind of where it feels like in three we're settling into not three. Season five. I keep calling season five season three because I'm excited to get to episode three when Logan Hunsberger dances onto the scene. Um, but <laughs> remember last like, episode when you said a new blonde enters the villa? <laughs> he does. That made me laugh just as hard rewatching it as it did in the moment. <laughs> so funny. My favorite blonde. Um, but yeah, so I think that like as we're getting into season five, uh, which is that start this week or is that last week that we started season five? We started last week. Yeah. Last Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so as we get into that, it feels like we're in Luke and Lorelai now. So like to bring Jason back feels like, what's the point? Mm. He went to the bathroom. He his never tummy came out. was hurting. And then he was embarrassed and he never came back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I'm curious what our listeners at home think because we're going to do a Gilmore to consider on Jason next week. So yeah. I, I really want to know Write if someone calls in and thinks like, oh, yeah, I think his storyline... 
really should have gone on or or we needed to wrap some of those things up with the lawsuit and just with Jason really yeah. fighting for her and then out of nowhere just being like, oh, OK, I got to go. Um, yeah. If they feel like we needed that or if his story was really over. Yeah. It makes me wonder, though, if like more of his storyline was catered towards Richard's downfall mm-hmm. than Lorelai's because like for all intents and purposes, his like storyline with Richard was pretty much wrapped up. He was going to sue them. Richard wasn't going to let him. And that was it. So like in that regard, it's kind of wrapped up. Um, with Lorelai, it seems like she ends things with men and then kind of just floats out into the ether, the ending. I Max. so. Yeah, Alex, Max is a giant Jason. question mark. Now Jason. Yeah. yeah. At this point Kinda in the story, like, we have no idea where Christopher is. Alex, bye. Tr- where is Christopher? <laughs> crazy so yeah anyway that's the last sighting of jason but we got a lot in between those two episodes from the, the hobbit yeah. the sofa and digger styles more commonly referred to on this podcast as the <laughs> hobbit the couch and jason and raincoats and recipes yeah. you know even though like you spoke to there wasn't necessarily a lot of relationship building there were moments for sure but it was more pockets of and glimpses yeah. of their relationship and how it was kind of progressing or at least the status of what was going on there the conflict that may have been there um a lot happens a lot does happen and a lot of it that i didn't know how to categorize into the flags because there's some parts that i'm just like it's more of like questions that i have mm. rather than like um necessarily like i could put this into a particular spot Mm. because there was a lot of things that we noticed about jason as we moved through season four that we were like wait what like in particular when gran the last sighting of gran uh she leaves the table she leaves the world jason was at this dinner Mm -hmm. where she leaves the table um and this is when she insults lorelei because she's hemorrhaging money and this is when lorelei starts to feel so terrible because she's gonna ask luke for money and she's really overwhelmed. This is when Richard gets mad at Trix. And this is just a really volatile dinner. And she goes back to Stars Hollow and she's crying with Luke about the status of her business mm-hmm. and the fact that she needs money. And from like getting to that dinner to getting to crying with Luke, where is her boyfriend? Where is Jason? Did Jason not leave with her? Or like, hey, you're having money issues? Mm. I'm really fucking rich. Like something in there? I don't know. Is like, he really why was rich the first- though? Is he? I don't know. Well, I think because his dad is Floyd, that's the only... Yeah. I have a question about that later when we get to the flags. But I remember us talking about that and feeling very... We were both just like, what? Yeah. Taken aback by that because it was something I never noticed before. But the thing is, is that I feel like... and, And... I say this with uh, the caveat that there are moments when I don't feel this way. But for the most part, I separate Jason into two different entities. Richard's business partner and Lorelai's romantic interest slash boyfriend when he gets there. But I never feel like I meld the two together. And so those moments that are few and far between where Jason is at Emily and Richard's while Lorelai is there... Yeah, I kind of pick up on it. But in that moment, for me, he was there as Richard's partner, not as Lorelai's boyfriend. So I never yeah. really put two and two together on like, yeah, where is he? Why isn't he showing up? Because. Yeah. Or like, know? but like afterwards, it's like you feel like he would follow her back to Stars Hollow. They would talk in the driveway or something because yeah. she's like breaking down with Luke. And you would think that she would leave that dinner and her boyfriend would be like, hey, you good girl. And she would cry with him over it. Now, don't get me wrong. I much prefer that she cried in the town square with Luke about it. Like, what one of the best scenes. Well, it's an indication of of where she's actually at emotionally with Jason. Yeah. Because the thing is, is that I feel like the purpose of the flags is to kind of answer this question that has been posed within the fandom of whether or not Jason was a viable love interest for Lorelai. Because I've heard some people say that they feel like he was the perfect partner for her. Yeah. And that's that- how we got connected with Christy on TikTok is because she made that TikTok of like saying that Jason was the best partner. Hi, really? Christy. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Yeah. Really? I didn't yeah. know I'll that. post it to our stories. It's so old. I hope that she's okay with that because she like listed out why she thinks that they would have been perfect together. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I And I do think that that is a widely accepted opinion within the fandom. I think a lot of people do believe that, but it was just the timing of everything. And I can get on board with that to a certain degree. But I think that that's 
why we're breaking this down is to kind of funnel all of this information towards that question and to answer the question of whether or not Jason was a good partner for Lorelai, if it was a missed opportunity, how they would have uh, fared if they had had a real future together. And I feel like a lot of these green flags, beige flags, red flags are going to speak to that. And I'm very intrigued to see where we land. Yeah. But before we get into it, I want to see if you remember where you felt about Jason before you started season four. Like before we got all of the evidence that we already had, but like zeroing in on these things. Do you remember like what your Jason opinion was? My Jason prior? opinion was um kind of mid, if I'm being honest. I yeah. think I always felt like Jason was there to be a filler for the period of time that the writers wanted to keep Lorelai and Luke apart just a little bit longer. They wanted to do that slow build towards the end of season four into the season five when they would finally get together. And Jason was more of a mechanism of keeping them apart for a little bit longer. Yeah. And he really felt like a writing device, really. He did. And I feel like when it comes to Jason, I remember I have a TikTok and I can find it that I did a few years ago asking for my thoughts on Jason Styles. And that was what I said. I said, I think he was just a mechanism to keep Luke and Lorelai apart. But I did think that he kind of intrigued us a little bit. It was like, oh, this is a person who can keep up with her, who isn't Christopher, who isn't any of the guys we've already met. He's new. He's fresh. He's fun. He's exciting. And he's like... <laughs> he's new. He's fresh. He's fun. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing an ad for Jason Styles right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's new. He's fresh. He's fun. Jason It's like Styles. I'm talking about toothpaste. <laughs> Me and my Jason Styles toothpaste. Why this can be? <laughs> no, but he's he is um, someone who felt kind of exciting. It wasn't like yeah. the same old trio of Max and Christopher and Luke who was introduced to us in season yeah. one, and that was kind of the rotation, with the exception of Alex and you know that guy Paul. She goes on the date with Peyton Sanders, like you know the regular three, the trio yeah. of men that we've been introduced to. He was someone new and and someone that. I don't know if we were necessarily rooting for, but at least gave us a a thought of like, oh, huh, that's a a pair I didn't expect. But for the most part, I still always landed on the reality that he was never going to be everything she wanted because everything she wanted, she already had right in front of her. He just needed to read a book and smooch her in front (laughs) of her new in. Exactly. Just need a little self-help, that one. What about you? I I I'm pretty sure I was in the camp that he was the one that got away. Mm. Like I think that I was like they would have worked out. Jason Jason was a good fit for her. Um, I'm 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 pretty sure that's what I was thought. That's what I think I thought. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure I've talked about it in the past. I think you have. God, but we've said so was, many words. I don't know. What, I don't remember. I don't know which ones went in which order, in which <laughs> direction. <You've said laughs> but so I do many think. Things. I do think that I thought that he was the one that got away, that they were a really good pair, that mm. um, yeah. something along the lines of what Christy said, of like they come from like the same background. She, He really is Lorelai's attempt at a Logan relationship of like someone who is kind of her equal, who falls in that same sort of like sense of humor that she does and is from the same world as she does and their families know each other. And um, you know how much I love a Logan. Um And so I think that, like, kind of comparing the two of those, I think that in my mind, I always thought that Jason was, well, that's where I have all my thoughts is in my mind, actually. Um, But I always thought Jason was the one that got away, that, like, Mm. they really could have worked out together. I think in a lot of ways, because I'm such a 5'6 watcher. And so I watch Luke fall apart. I I watch Luke become the worst of himself. After we both agreed at the end of four, he was the best of himself the best. like best he's ever been oh. like luke scott patterson star of season four Truly. especially there at the end and so i think because i'm such a five six watcher watching like the watching two of them devolve and like watching luke really kind of not be the character that we were rooting to love, for yeah yeah that i think that looking back on a season that i don't watch that much i'm like well we had jason um so i think that that's kind of where i was before watching four. Okay. Or re-watching four, rather, when I've seen it. <laughs> of course. Yeah, but, like, yeah. really re-watching it. So has that changed? Yes. Okay. But it has not changed. Like, the thought process has not changed. The conclusion has. Mm. Okay. And we'll get into it. 
Well, let's get into it. I think we should start with the green flags and then move our way okay. towards red, stopping at beige because apparently that's the in between. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know who made that up. Yeah, I don't know. All it's right, it's an internet thing these days. It is, yeah. Okay, so what's your first green flag? My first green flag is, I think, the first uh, idea that Jason presents to her as to why the two of them are going to work out. And this is a Laura-like green flag. And then it's because Emily would not approve of this. I put that under beige flag. Interesting. I put it under beige flag because I agree. But at the same time, I don't know if that's good for her. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's something that is probably very attractive for her. Yeah. But I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Like, You're one right. of the things that I thought was really great about her relationship with Max is that Max had a really good relationship with his parents. So he always kind of encouraged yeah. her to take the high road with her parents. Whereas her and Jason. Which to Lorelai, that's like red. <laughs> yeah. She's like. You're right. It's, I think that one maybe I classified wrong. It's like, it's attractive to her. But it is beige. Because you look at it and you're like, that's not good. But I guess it's not bad. Because you don't want. Someone who you don't want to, what was that guy's name in the Chase Bradford? You don't want to trace Bradford. That's a red flag because mm -hmm. Emily approves too much. Mm -hmm. So maybe beige. Maybe you're right. Yeah, that's I put that in beige. What's interesting about that is that that is really attractive to her. But the whole problem becomes that they want to tell her about it. But it's a point of contention because she doesn't think they'll she's going to approve. So it really comes to bite her. So I so actually put little... that, speaking of, into his green flags. I said he wanted to tell Emily and Richard about his and Lorelai's relationship from the very beginning. And I thought that was yeah. very admirable. He was, but he also respected the fact that she wasn't ready to do that. And I also that was thought my, that was a green flag. That was my one directly under that is the green flag was that he wanted to tell them and be honest, mm -hmm. especially because it was his business partners. But he's abiding by her wishes and being respectful of her relationship and her boundaries his relationship yeah. yeah yeah even though he might not agree with them he respects yeah. them i did put a little bit under red that he was a little bit pushy about it in the beginning but as they back off it's not completely red it's kind of like salmon color if you will because he starts a little pushy and i was like whoa 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 my dude she told you she didn't want to yeah but he completely backs off and is like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get in the middle of this Totally, totally. The other green flag that I wrote down is when they do eventually find out, Emily and Richard, about their relationship, I appreciated that he did not throw her under the bus. I said yes. that when we were recapping we loved that. on Patreon because tick, 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 he did boom. say, like, I wanted to tell you, but he doesn't say, but she wouldn't let me. <laughs> he just owns yeah. it. He's like, I should have told you and I'm sorry that I didn't. He owns it. He doesn't throw any responsibility or blame onto her. It, it just, it was really, yeah. I thought it was really classy. Yeah, we talked about that a lot in Tick, 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 Boom when we were um, recapping it because that was something I never really noticed before is that Jason goes into the office to be chastised by Richard and he com takes like complete ownership for his actions and does not use it as an opportunity to uh, find a way out of it by throwing Lorelai under the bus. Mm -hmm. Completely, it's just about the two of them. Lorelai yeah. does not come into the picture until he's like, yeah, I've been lying to you. But- Right. Before that, he right. doesn't use her as an excuse I to agree. get out of trouble. And I loved that. I we both totally loved that. Agree. We had a long conversation about whether what we would do. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know. But another one that I had is that he's very thoughtful about their first date, mm. really wants to get it right. But I do love that the grocery store date that they do end up on. It's really cute. Me too. It also made also made me go through a Pringle era that I'm still in. Laura I loves Pringles. Pringles. And I, I have not stopped them. eating them. They're just when did so we good. recap that? That a was Ted Koppel's Big Night Out a long time ago. I've been in a Pringle era since then. <laughs> um, the other one was he cares about his work. He works yeah. really hard. That was actually my first one. He's very hardworking and very driven. And yeah. in tandem with that, he wants to get out from under the thumb of his father's legacy and the plan that his dad laid out for him. And despite the fact that that could maybe be something that like they connect on in maybe a negative way, I yeah. do think that because it's something she can connect to and she has someone who can understand her, I put it yeah. under green flag. Yeah. And I, I think that's 
person specific because it like immediately reminds me of um book lovers by emily henry because like both of them feel like they're the wrong type of person for Mm -hmm. other people Mm -hmm. but when they find each other they are the right type of person for each other and i feel like that's the kind of relationship that jason and laurel i have it's because like they're both making calls when they're like in bed together like doing business like they both respect the fact that both of them work late and get up early except for that one episode when they were trying to go antique shopping um but right other than that, they like are really respectful of the fact that they're both in this phase of life where they're working really hard. And I think that just and working hard to like build their own independence from their yeah. families. And I I know that there are caveats to Jason's side of that, and we'll get into that with the other flags. But I do Ooh, think that, is that interesting. it's admirable that they both want to kind of build their own entities outside of like even though they could have help from their family and they have in the past. They want yeah. to build their own paths, you know? They want to build their own paths, but it's interesting that he wants to build his own path into her family's path, which mm. is what she wants to get away from. It's true. That is a really, really good conflict. Good job, Amy Sherman Palladino. Great work. Like, that was that was, that was great work, admittedly. <laughs> Love it. Um, the only other one that I have is um, he communicates in ways that he... Uh, shied away from in the past Mm. and he's using now his feelings for her and his desire to be with her to change the way that he does things yeah like he talked about being a bolter um Mm -hmm. in uh what was that spring break boys in bikinis girls in bikinis always mess that up i love it i think it's most commonly known (laughs) on this podcast as boys in bikinis bikinis. and if you said anything else i'd be confused no girls doing the twist um but that's when he brings up the talking key And he does it very, like, coy, like, just kind of just hands it to her, kind of nervous about it. Yeah. When he brings it back up when they're in front of her house and explains that right now is the time when he would normally run away, but he doesn't want to do that. And he really wants to be with her and he really wants to commit to her. And I really liked that idea. I also liked the comparison that someone on Patreon pointed out to us that in season one, Suki and Lorelai were in the kitchen talking. The only context I have for this is when she does the Ricky Martin. Yeah, the Ricky Martin, of um, course. That's the first thing <laughs> yeah. I thought of. You said it and I started yeah. singing it in my mind. Da, Me da, too. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's because she calls herself a bolter. Yeah. It's like, this is when she would bolt. You do the, so yeah, this that. is when you do the cha-cha-cha. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they both have that tendency. But he's like, you know what? I don't want to do that. So yeah. here is a key to my apartment. I wrote that down as well. I said he's very intentional about making a concerted effort to move their relationship forward. And then I yeah. put in parentheses the talking key. The talking key. Yeah. Um, and those are all the green ones that I had. I said that I, he has great banter and can keep up with Lorelai intellectually, which yeah, I think yeah. is something that just immediately drew a lot of the fandom to him when their relationship was growing and evolving is that it was like, yeah. oh, you guys really work well with each other. And from the jump. They have yeah, that. he's funny. Yeah, he's very funny. The other thing that I put, I actually have a couple more. So the other okay. thing I put was that he's seemingly independent. And I put that with a little star next to it because as we were talking about before, I don't know if he's actually independent or if he has his dad's money. I feel like um, someone who has been working for his dad as long as he has probably has a lot of money saved. Yeah. That is like family money. And I'm sure like relatives have died and left him money trust fundy sure like, it seems like very very wealthy family to be with floyd so i would say that he's independent in the way that someone is independent because they got where they are because of their parents can be which is yeah where lorelei actually is as well <laughs> fair fair i feel like he's brutally honest he doesn't shy away from the really hard conversations yeah and well, he does for a second because he thought the key spoke for itself. But then he's like, course. no. But yeah. then he does end up having that conversation, you know? Yeah. Um, and I also think that he's loyal, maybe sometimes to a fault. But the mm. way that he really, really steps up when everything falls apart in tick, 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 boom with Richard. And he's like, Richard, I will not let this happen. I will do everything I can to clean this up. Like, I understand that I fucked up here. I'm here with you. I'm 100% in. He's very loyal. Yeah. That's when he says, I'll get your trust back. And he says, I trust you. And then he fucks him over. So it, do you think that uh, his loyalty was kind of tested there that 
he kind of had to pick suing or Lorelai? Hmm. Not no. I don't know that he necessarily saw it as a breach of loyalty. Yeah. I think, again, similarly to how I feel, he to kind of separated the two. It was like, I have Lorelai yeah. and I have the business and Richard, even though, yeah. unfortunately, those two have a lot of strings attached to the two, they to each other. do with that. Yeah. But Doing those are my green flags. flags. Okay. Let's move on to beige okay. flags. They're good. Beige flags is kind of hard because there's could there could be so many. This is a quirky, quirky dude. <laughs> He's a quirky, quirky man. Yeah. Quirky, quirky man. What's your first one? My first one is that he comes from a wealthy family. And I put that as a beige flag because, again, I think it's something that he and Lorelai can connect on, but I don't necessarily know that that's the right partner for her. And subsequently under that, I put he really, really wants to piss off his dad. He doesn't yeah. have a strong relationship with his parents, and he can subsequently understand Lorelai's relationship with hers, but I don't know if that's necessarily what she needs and maybe he's yeah. a little too much like christopher in that regard that like they can't get out of like what they're mired in in their family drama and in the maybe trauma that they had as kids etc yeah that they're so they can feed off of each other so much that it's hard to actually move on from it yeah that they they were probably going to be very hard pressed to grow away from that and like change their positioning there mm -hmm. because yeah they would probably just feed off of each other's um family feud if you will mm -hmm. um i put that down that the bad relationship with his family because like from me someone having a bad relationship with their family i would that would red flag me i'm like what happened here until maybe they explained it because not sure. everyone has to have a good relationship but like someone who like actively wants to pursue continuing a bad relationship i'm like but like, I Lorelai's really want to stick it to my dad. It's, it's yeah. different than where Lorelai's at. Like, Lorelai has little petty moments where, you know, at the end of Those Are Strings, when she's like, at the end of season three, when she says like, for once, I want to get what I want. And I want you to get what you want. And I want them to get nothing. Like, you know, yeah. she has those moments. But yeah. for the most part, she's not like out to like, you know, stick it to no. her family. Yeah. And like, they're really helping her. And mm -hmm. like, I don't think that Jason feels that same sort of like, um, connection to them that he has helped them or like any sense of gratitude that because he doesn't have that same sort of like you're paying for my daughter mm -hmm. you're helping her get through her life totally. um so like there is there's that level of it um and i put can't really do emotions which i put under beige flag because i don't think that people should be held to like red or green flags for the ability to move through things as a result of their family mm. It's kind of like what you choose to do with it in your new relationship as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And I do think that Jason is, like, as we talked about in his green flags, communicating and really honest with her and, like, not leading her on in any way or necessarily letting any of the bad habits that he learned from his relationship hurt her. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of put that one as a beige flag because it doesn't seem to – it's kind of something you have to accept about him. Really? Well, that's actually, I put something similar in Beige Flag. I put, he doesn't do well with death. And that can kind of go hand in hand with everything you just shared. He talks about the reason why, but he's not so good at that. Yeah. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that he doesn't, at least from what we see as what we were talking about before, he doesn't like go to console Lorelai after this really embarrassing dinner with her grandmother basically calling her a charity case. Like, where is he? Yeah. You know, he's not where the one emotionally <laughs> salvaging her. And I feel like the only time that they ever really have those like emotional uh, postmortems when it comes to conflict is, af is in Tick, 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 Boom, where they grab the bottle of vodka and they go back to his house yeah. And but that doesn't really necessarily feel healthy. It just feels like we're no. going to get drunk and talk about why this situation sucks instead of having real honest deep conversations. Yeah. I have a red flag in that circumstance, but I don't think that like not being able to deal with funerals, right, and death is the red flag. Totally. I have like a I understand sort of a different one. Um in that same vein though I put not a hugger. <laughs> Not a hugger. That's just yeah. not bad, not good, just not a hugger. <laughs> yeah. Um, for beige flag, I put the whole separate bedroom thing, not being able to sleep next to anyone. I don't know that I, 
I, I have mixed feelings about it, which is why I put it in beige because I also yeah. think that Lorelai has mixed feelings about it. You know, I think she sees the room and how, you know, what a lovely independent the experience room. she can yeah. have and watch TV and do whatever she wants. It's great. But at the same time, I think that it's only great to a certain extent because what if you do want to spend the night next to your partner and they're just like incapable of doing so? So yeah. it has its pros and cons, but that is something that I think someone would consider a beige flag in someone. Yeah, I think that the not being able to because he can't fall asleep and it's like just best for everyone is beige, but I have a red flag to that as well. Okay. When we get there. I'll, I'll save it though. Um, some of them, some of the other ones I have are just quirky. That he wanted to go on a first date quietly, like in silence. Like he wanted I wrote to be in that the, private um, room. The quiet dining experience. Yeah. And like what we talked about was that like if you were on a date with Brett and he was like, hey, I got us this private room and you don't have to listen to anyone else chew or any background noise. It can just be the two of us enjoying this. I would be like, You're oh, like, fuck you. yes. You love me. You understand me to my core. Yeah. But on a first date, yeah. you guys are like secluded. You're like, oh, OK. Yeah. Brett and I watched Ooh. that episode recently. And oh, really? he was just like, yeah, it's Ted Koppel's Big Night Out. So oh. we watched it and he was just like, absolutely not. I said, if yeah. I said if you took me to this dining experience, I would be very happy. He was like, absolutely not. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. Okay. He's like, all the fun stuff is out there. I was like, yeah, but how many times have you and I been in a restaurant and we both have to put earplugs in because it's so fucking loud. We can't even hear each other talk or think yeah. or anything. Like, it's just. And like, how many times have you been like, I can't. I, I can't, can't listen to this person. I gotta go. Chew these nachos Chew, or even like, like it's not even so much it is it is about that but it's about like some Pulling people in chips. restaurants <laughs> like that are are just screaming we were in this restaurant the other night uh last night actually and there were these two girls who were very clearly like had had a few drinks and were just like and i was like that is blah, 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 blah. and i'm like trying to have a conversation with my partner and i was just like could you like turn your volume dial down just like yeah. a little bit i don't need you to be silent silence i think <laughs> is like that's a lot that's but intense. i think having like a nice intimate dining experience with someone that you're trying to get to know can be really nice yeah. and so that's why i put Maybe it under a beige quiet flag. dining room not silent <laughs> no because i think that his intention was like i want to get to know you and this is what I think yeah. would be a nice way to get to know you. And for her, that wasn't it. But he immediately, in that moment, and this can kind he's of like, go under green wrong. flag, he's like, this is wrong. Yeah. You don't want to be here. Let's go. And he takes yeah. her to a place that she actually prefers, which is why I consider it a beige flag, because yeah. he didn't force that upon her. He just was like, no. oh, I chose wrong. Okay, let's get yeah. out of here. That's what I also love about Brett, yeah. is that when I'm in a situation where I don't feel comfortable, he will be like, Let's get the fuck out of here. And he just picks up his stuff and we <laughs> yeah. leave. It's great. It's understanding. And I, I agree. I didn't think about that. But I would put his response to that under green flags. Yeah. Because he just was like, okay. And then he's not going to eat in the car. And so she's not going to eat. And then they ended up at the grocery store. It's all great. I love that whole sequence. I love so much. Well, there's one in there um, that is a red flag for me. But I'll talk about it in a second. Okay. Ooh. Um, then his dog only knows how to go to the left. I just wrote his dog. <laughs> A dog yeah. is a green flag. I, I had to put beige because I love dogs. But I love dogs. This is just I have a dog right here. <laughs> I know you do. I'm glad he has a dog. That's why it's it's yeah. in beige. But everything else about his dog is a red flag. Yeah. Is it Jason that's the red flag? Or is it his dog? It's Jason. <laughs> I would yeah. be like, I mean, listen, his dog was trained to do certain things, so I understand after a certain he was a, point. He was raised by monks, right? Yeah. So he's trained yeah. to be to have a certain temperament. But There's Jason chose everyone. that. <laughs> Jason chose Cyrus, that. right? Cyrus. Yeah. It's fun. It's quirky. It's it's, it's quirky. a conversation piece. And I love Nothing dogs. Wrong with it. So yeah. I put Yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to put him He's kind of like beige tinted green, Cyrus. Because I would never call a dog a red flag no. unless you had an aggressive dog. Sure. In which case, maybe. Um my but, cat just made yeah. a sound as we were talking about that. <laughs> She's like, why are you guys talking about dogs? Do you have more beige? I do. Um, so, of course, I put that Emily doesn't like him. But in tandem with that, sort of, his lawsuit against the Gilmores. Same. That was my last one. Because it shows that he is the kind of person who stands up for what he believes in. But it's also really detrimental to his relationship with Lorelai. Yeah. And it's... 
I think I also feel beige about suing your family. Normally, if someone was suing my family, major red. But it's like the relationship and the dynamic that comes from it that I'm just kind of like, because we took a poll on our Patreon of like, you thought that Lorelai should break up with him uh, and you agreed that he should sue them. You thought that he should sue them and that Lorelai shouldn't break up with him, that you didn't care because Jason could go fuck himself was, mm-hmm. I think, the final answer. Um, and a lot of people kind of felt mixed about it, but most people were like, they should break up and he should sue them. And I was like, hmm, I was really surprised to find that. that was I mean, yeah, that popular. seems like the most logical for everybody involved, in my opinion. I mean, their relationship, I think we can talk about this in a minute, but their relationship had run its course to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, not being able to look at it and zoom out a little bit. But at the yeah. same time, I, I just don't know how you go through something like that and walk away and go, well, okay. Like, <laughs> no, okay, you have to well, fight. To you have to fight for your business and you have to fight for yeah. yourself. And I, Richard screwed him over. Richard screwed him over. Regardless of the yeah. reason, I know what his reason was. He needed to protect his assets and he needed to protect his reputation there were a lot of things at stake he put his what his retirement his pension pension. as collateral and so he had a lot at stake here but the way that he treated jason in my opinion was just really scummy and so what was jason not so he said i have to respond and i totally agree with him yeah like i really felt like he should sue them like green flag but not because you can't like you can't put a lawsuit as a green flag i don't know like some cases, but in this one, I just, I had to beige it because I just, it it's, feels it's a beige right. flag for me. Yeah. Lorelai's response to it can fall into a different one, but I felt very beige about it, verging on green, but mm. beige because okay. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't put it in the green. Yeah. But yeah. No, I totally That understand. was my, um, that was my last beige. Did you have another? No. Shall we move into red? <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for of course. <laughs> Do you want to hear what my first red flag is? Sure. He doesn't like Mexican food. He doesn't. He doesn't like Mexican food. That's. I'm sorry. If you don't want to eat a taco with me, I'm out. Yeah. On our first date, you're going to say, I don't, I don't want to eat a taco with you. What? With Lorelai Gilmore? never taken me on a date. <laughs> I, yeah. No, I'm sorry. If you don't want to yeah. have a taco with me. And now I can understand not being in the mood for Mexican food, but he does say he doesn't like Mexican food. I don't food. like Mexican food. What? That's kind of like my younger sister, though, where she'll be like, oh, I don't like that type of food because she doesn't want it. <laughs> and so like that's how that's she what phrases it. Is, it. Though. I think he doesn't and like I don't Mexican think so either. food. Which is like honestly one of my favorite types of food. Same. So Mexican food, but I do know Italian I do know you food. struggle with Mexican restaurants. I do because, because of, of the chips. chips because they usually yeah. serve chips. It is hard. Oh my god, we were at Playa Betty's the other day. Mm. Thank God Brett had his um, earplugs. I didn't bring mine with me because it was kind of an impromptu thing. This man was eating chips next to us like a fucking barbarian. I had we had to get the check. I was like, I have to leave. He goes, I think Brett goes. I don't think this man knows how to eat, not just chips. <laughs> I think this is his first time seeing chips before. <laughs> it was bad. I, it was bad. So, bad. Was it I like just, the airplane. I think oh, we that talked was about so in bad. Was and it Gilmore yes. to say wrapped that we talked about the chip experience on the airplane? I don't know, but that was so was. bad. Yeah. Thank God for you, Haley. I need your headphones. <laughs> What? Did, did we ever talk? <laughs> did we ever talk about when Brett, for your, I think it was your birthday, gave you really nice earplugs? He did. Yeah, that was like that's when we knew. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I actually yeah, ended up getting flag. a newer version of those that that um, transition. So you put them in their loops, um, but you can adjust like how much sound you want coming through them. Oh wow, it's really nice cool. because last night when we were at the bar and those girls were yelling, like I put one in on the side that they were on their side and I adjusted it because like if I had had it on the one that muffled it the most I couldn't fully hear Brett and so I just like Mm. unlocked it a little bit and I could hear those girls a little bit more than I wanted to you can't like fully block someone out and still have a conversation can't just mute them (laughs) unfortunately no though I'm really looking forward to when we can do that with people but I was happy that I had kind of a little bit of an, an adjustment that I could make to still have a conversation with the person sitting in front of me so yeah. 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 But yeah, I don't know. I don't I 
I'm sorry if you don't like Mexican food, but for me, that's a red flag because I'm yeah, look, a lot I'm not of here it. to insult you, but like, I also would like to ask if you're okay. Mexican food is so a taco. There, and there's so many. A there's quesadilla. So many things, <laughs> like there's so many different types of like so many different things involved in it. Chips just, and salsa. Ooh. You don't like chips and salsa and guac. Yeah. I just man. I have a tough time. Just like, so many types of tacos, tacos and pizza. Like those are just. I don't even have know. Have you ever folded a pizza in half and turned it into a pitaco? Pitaco. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> We've talked a lot about Mexican food here. <laughs> I but love Mexican food. So yeah, that was a red flag for me. And honestly, for Lorelai Gilmore. Yeah, she doesn't want it's, dietary it's, restrictions. No, it did feel a little bit like they were going through a Taco Bell drive through like a Connecticut version of a Taco Bell. So like, Which is I also do understand. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> but like some sort For me, of like in college, Connecticut- just Taco Bell. No, I understand what you're saying. Oh, I know you got left at a Taco Bell. I we did get left at a Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> which I saw the Taco Bell. Which I thought if you, you guys passed did, it. I said, that's the Taco yeah. Bell I got left at. Yeah. Good times. If you guys watch our um, road trip vlog on Patreon. Oh, that was so fun. We did Taco Bell. We just drove by. We didn't stop. It was raining. Um, we oh, had places times. to be. We couldn't just stop at Taco Bell. But it feels like a, you know, like a Connecticut Gilmore Girls yeah. version of Taco Bell. And like, I love Taco Bell. But like, if we go to a Taco Bell drive-thru, I could, I could first see Jason being like, you know. But to just rule out that as Mexican food. That's a red flag. Um. Yeah, <laughs> not for me. Not my guy. Hey, speaking yeah. of drive throughs he drives like an absolute menace. That was my first one. Drives too fast in small towns. And then he pissed off Duke. Pissed off Duke. He was just trying to get around him. Like, and it was unsafe. Every, like, I'm pretty sure that Stars Hollow is the jaywalking capital of the world. Mm. And so, like, for him to just, like, swerve in and out like that, I'm like, dude. I was like, dude, where do you have to fucking be right now? And also, you're on the phone with, like, China or something. Yeah. So I think it was down. Japan. But he did have to get there so quickly to sit in her uh, front yard. Yeah. For however long. I know. Come on. So weird. Yeah. So weird. Um, but that. to that point. Another red flag for me is that as much as I appreciate and respect that he is very hardworking and driven, he's also kind of a workaholic. Like in that, that same was my next episode, one too. Really, constantly working, constantly working, and like can't detach from work. And I understand. Like, look, <laughs> Haley and I text each other at all hours of the day and night about yeah. what we do. Yeah, like, also we were just it. because we're you texting me like twelve thirty last night. I literally texted you at twelve thirty last night, being like, "Hey, what are we doing for this episode tomorrow?" Like, what is I, going on? You no, know, but there is like a level of it. It's like it's hard because like it's fun. This is also like a very strong interest of ours. We enjoy so what like, we do. We love it, yeah. and we're always having ideas. So I understand that when you are in charge of your own business, it's really hard to hang up the phone, close the laptop, whatever it may be, and yeah. unplug. But at the same time, if I was with Brett and like we had plans and we were spending the day together unplugged detached from work i I would do my best to make sure that that was the case and i didn't necessarily feel like jason i mean sometimes some things are out of your control but i didn't feel like jason necessarily was able to we don't necessarily work with japan we don't necessarily work with insurance we're not doing anything (laughs) you're so right this episode is sponsored by insurance (laughs) Remember when we met that guy at Podcast Movement? We did. And he was like, he works in insurance in Hartford. He was like, do you think that your fan base would respond to this? And we were like, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. And we never heard from him again. I never heard from him. Um, We did talk to him for a really long time. (laughs) It really was because our food was taking so long. It was. It really was. That's what it was. Wild. You were were forced to. And then the fire alarm went off. Anyway. Multiple times. (laughs) We're getting sidetracked. (laughs) Um. But in that same vein of, like, constantly working, I kind of put works for her father as, like, a little bit of a red flag of, like, what did you think was going to happen, Lorelai? And look, she, I mean, she fought it for as long as she could. I think the reason she went on a date with him was to spite her parents. Talking about, you know, being spiteful and that I, I feel like her spitefulness is a little few and far between when it comes to, like, sticking it to her parents This felt like it fell into that category a little bit. I don't think she expected to actually like Jason. I think she did this to be kind of a menace. Well, that was the whole point. In Ted Koppel, she was, like, really mad at her mom. Yeah. So she was like, okay, Jason, let's go on a date. And then she liked him. (laughs) 
<laughs> you watch Whoops. Friends, right? Well, so you say that a lot, but I like I've seen it, but I don't watch okay, it. I can I never remember. Seen it all. There's um there's an episode, I think it's season seven, episode one, where uh Monica and Chandler get engaged. And it's called the one where uh the one with the thunder or somebody stealing the thunder. And basically Rachel is seen outside of their apartment on the night that Monica gets engaged kissing Ross and Monica gets really upset being like, you stole my thunder. It's like my one night and you had to go kiss Ross and that's all anybody's going to talk about. And they get into this fight about it and Rachel's trying to be all nice and Monica won't accept it. And Rachel goes, fine. Okay, Ross, let's go have sex. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could think of is like, all right, mom, fine. Jason, come on. Let's go on a date. Like, that is really what Lorelai did. She just did it purely yeah. out of spite because she was mad at her Which mom. Her Jason mom was proposed. kind of an asshole to her. Admittedly, she, she was blaming her was. for things that Richard did. Yeah. It's like, Lorelai didn't sad. do anything. She was yeah. upset. Red flag, I Emily. <laughs> no, I understand. She was very upset, but she tends to take a lot of her anger, frustration out on Lorelai. In a way that she doesn't deserve. So Lorelai took her frustration and went to the grocery store. Yeah. Well, really, she went to a really private, quiet, silent dining Restaurant, experience. drive through and then a grocery store. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I so I put works for her father because that kind of seems like, what were you expecting? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> um, true. I put here another version of a beige flag, which is that he wants to undermine his father like, he has a bad relationship, but, like, he really, really mm-hmm. wants to piss off his dad. Which is, like, so... Like, I don't know why they, like, really Dave rogowski did him they did. with that one. Um, but, yeah, it just feels like... What? <laughs> mm. Like, if if my potential love interest was, like, didn't have a good relationship with their parents, like we talked about before, but were, like, actively seeking ways to, like continue that Mm -hmm. yeah red flag no i understand and to that i think that's part of the reason why he kind of i don't want to say he doesn't like emily but i do feel like he goes out of his way sometimes to get under her skin yeah well i put a red flag here is dismissing emily gilmore Mm -hmm. because this is when lorelei comes and defends him and she's in her juicy tracksuit which i was like super confused why jason never mentioned that she had juicy on her rear end Mm -hmm. um that just felt like he would comment on that but regardless is that he knew what this meant to emily he -hmm. has a mom who is like the same type of woman who like has been this wife in this corporate world who throws parties like this who knows what it means to her who knows that she would feel dismissed and doesn't care and doesn't care to consider her um it's just like he just completely dismisses her. And he's yeah. like, great, now you can go relax. Now you can hang out. What is it that she says? Yeah. Uh, like my like, my favorite thing. Relax and hang out. Yeah. Um, and just like the way that he dismisses her. Like that's why like when I first started to get into four, I was like, oh, I don't like Jason. Jason is nothing but red flags here for me. Um, and then it changes. But that Of one course, really it shifts as he was, starts yeah. to build a relationship with Lorelai. But yeah, you know, that kind of dismissiveness and he can be a little arrogant, a little smug. That's that's a red flag for me because even if he does have all of these really great qualities beneath it, it's kind of hard to get on board with Jason when he comes off as this like confident, yes, but like smug, maybe a little manipulative in his approach to this because he's a business guy. Yeah. Self-centered. But what's interesting is like I felt that way and so did Lorelai. Mm-hmm. And then like when she picks up the phone and was like, hey, let's go on that date that you've been trying to get me to go on because I'm mad at my parents. And even though you upset my parents, now I want to upset them more. And then we get to know him and we're like, oh, I actually do like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Oopsie daisy. I put this under red flags, but it could be a beige flag because it's something that – is kind of um it's kind of got a question mark over it we never Mm. really find out where he stands on kids and subsequently i know that this was kind of in tandem with the fact that rory was in college and lorelei and rory were navigating their newfound relationship and dynamic but we never see him build any sort of relationship with rory or take any sort of interest in her and that's true i felt a little turned off by that. that That it's kind yeah. of a red flag. We don't know how he feels about kids, if he wants kids. Um, 
which he doesn't necessarily have to because Roy's grown up and we don't know if that's something Lorelai wants, but he just never seems to take any sort of interest in her. And even when he does see her, it doesn't seem like he wants to know her. I don't know if that's a thing on behalf of the writers of like, they just kept it to the Gilmores and to Lorelai, but he never meets really any of her, anyone from her world. Like he shows up in Stars Hollow, but like he doesn't really interact with Rory. Rory who calls him Scooper, <laughs> which is just one of my favorite things. Yeah, to be fair, like Rory doesn't make an effort to get to know him. You know, like I'm not yeah. just putting that on Jason, but that's why I didn't know where to put this because it's such no, like a... That's an a Jason Lorelai thing. thing. Yeah. I feel like it'd be weird if like her 19 year old daughter was like, hey, let's get to know each other. No, I don't but know. I just mean like and awkward. these were this was purely circumstantial, but Max and Rory had a very good relationship and he yes. wanted to know her. He wanted to be integrated into her life. It's very different because of the way they met. That's the nature that he yeah. met her mom. But even Alex and her had like a rapport. And like Jason showed up at Friday night dinner a couple of times, and you would think that I don't know. Maybe it was like a to avoid the suspicion of the grandparents that Jason was too close to worry. I don't know. Sure. Maybe she was focused at school. She had a weak storyline. They could have added some Jason into her. I don't they know. Truly could have. But but yeah, they really didn't explore that, which is always what makes me like come back to the fact that like if they had too many people invested in Jason, they would have had to tie up too many things. It almost feels like I don't know. But they Fair. didn't tie up anything with Max. So. Fair. Well, but that's why I think we got the Nick and Nora conflict with Max was because they needed to maybe maybe they felt like yeah. they needed that for Rory and Max. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I really wanted you to be my stepfather. Heartbreaking. Yeah, I know. Kills me. But that's all I have on the red flags front. What about you? You have two more? I have two more. The lady room. I'm sorry. We talked about this extensively on Patreon, but like him having this separate room that he already has all set up. For other people to sleep in. We can call it a guest room. But there's like, lav isn't there like lavender or vanilla bubble bath or something in the bathroom? Yeah. That doesn't seem like something he would just be like, this is in my bathroom. I stock this regularly. It's also in my bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, it just feels like a lady room. And it's like, I'm gonna, we're gonna sex in here and then you can sleep in here. And it just feels weird. And it has nothing, it's less to do with the beige flag of it. Because the beige flag feels like... He can't sleep next to people. It needs to be a conversation mm -hmm. of like, I'm not going to sleep well. Like maybe some sort of compromise there. But it feels like he's like, and now my lady room. The TV pops out of the dresser, like right in front of it. Like it just seems, I don't know. I don't love it. We talked about this a lot on Patreon. We a did. lot of people weighed in. A lot of people thought that they would really, really love it. And like, I also love the idea of having my like own space. Mm -hmm. But if I was just starting to see someone and... They were like, I have this whole extra room. And you're like, just for me? Am I the only one that's used this? Obviously <laughs> and I think it's, not. No, but I think it's more of what, the way that I wanted to fix that storyline in the episode, which you can go back and listen to it, is that I wanted them to have a conversation of like, I need an in-between. And then he sets this up for her. Like, like they have like a time where they try to sleep in the same bed and it doesn't work and he's like i have made a solution why don't you come in here i even got you vanilla bubble bath to like entice her because otherwise it feels it feels like she's one of many that's what is to bothering you about it is that yeah. he has it with anticipation of the people he's already going to sleep with kind of and okay. like i'm not to say that's wrong i don't think it's wrong but i i think that like if someone was trying to push me into their lady room I, he no, I hear where that. You're from. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? If this was Logan, yes. how would you feel about it? I think I'd still feel the same. You would? Yeah. I just, I don't, me, because speaking to, I don't know. We, we talked about, you know, how this was maybe Lorelai's, as Christy said, like Lorelai's Logan attempt. Is that what she said or what you said? I don't want to That's what I said. That's what you said. Um, yeah. But, or maybe she said that. I don't know. Well, I don't remember, either way, but, yeah. I'll give you both credit. Um, <laughs> I feel like there are definitely some qualities that I could see both having, and one of which is Logan is not, um, he's not quiet about the fact that, like, no, he has physical connections with other people. And so I wonder if that was something that felt more out in the open. And if it was a, a quality that Logan had where he was just like, I don't sleep on next to other people. And so subsequently, I've 
like built this I've space. I've worked this out already. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious how how you would feel about because I, I know, know that one of the the qualities that you admire in Logan is that the way that he kind of unapologetically is honest with people about the way he lives yeah. his life and that he is that way with Rory. So yeah. I'm just curious how you would feel if it was more of that situation. I don't know. I still think I would feel kind of weird about it if only I because I just wanted the storyline to make it more personal because they were already in a relationship. Yeah. I think that if they were just like, whatever, now we're just sleeping together. And then he was like, and this is the room that you sleep in. I think I would have hated that more. Mm. Um Maybe. I don't know. I just, I, I like, I can't come to like a solid conclusion on it. I understand. I know it was something that gave you a lot of feelings when yeah. we watched the episode. And I think part of it is because I call it the lady room. He doesn't call it like, he doesn't call it that. And I would say like a majority of our Patreon comments from the super cool party people were just like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> but great. also, you know, putting yourself in that situation, I think I would have felt very similarly to Lorelai. Because they're still kind getting to know off. each other. I think I would yeah. have been like, I feel like I'm being pushed out of here. I'm just going to go home and sleep in my yeah. own bed. Um, and he's like, no, 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 no. And I think because of how adamant he was that he wanted her there, mm. he was like, no, but I want you here. <laughs> totally. It, it kind of goes back and forth. I understand. Um, I totally understand. But in like a completely opposite direction, my uh, red flag to a beige flag was about funerals. And I know that he doesn't deal well with death and he doesn't deal well with funerals, but I really thought this would have been a really good way to develop and build their relationship of like, I don't do funerals, I don't do death. And this is entirely related to Trix's death and the fact that his partner, business partner and his romantic partner had a very close family member, mother and grandmother die that I really, really wish he would have been like, I don't do death, I'm not going to come. But he ended up being there because... He might, he might not do death and funerals, but he does do supportive boyfriend things. I had initially had this under red flags and it kind of teeters between that and beige because I would never want to say that someone's red flag is, uh, you know, as a result of the way that they maybe were treated in the past yeah. or had like a bad experience in the past. And that makes it hard for them to deal with. I never want to say like, oh, that's a red flag. But at the yeah. same time, I agree with you that the fact that he wasn't able to put that aside to help her. Even if it meant not necessarily being at the funeral, but just showing or, up for her like, in any way could have been even great. just like coming in the back. You don't have to go to the viewing, like you know, like you don't have to be like right up front. I think, but it's just like showing up, even if it's a matter of like I'm coming to the venue. I might sit in the hallway, but like I'm not here for the celebration of life. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I'm not here for my business partner. I'm here because my girlfriend's going through a hard time. Wasn't there a deleted scene that we watched that Suki was yes. in? And was he in the scene? Because he shows up? Is he is he in the scene or is that scene in there? Because he does show up. He does. But I, don't I don't remember. I can't remember if it's a deleted scene or not, but Jason comes to the uh, reception afterwards and he pretends like he was there. Mm-hmm. He was like, was that good? And she was like, yeah, great. And they don't really, she's not bothered by it, which is maybe why it's not a red flag. But it's a red flag to me that like, you can show up. I know that it's hard, but that's, it's hard for her too. Maybe it shouldn't be hard yeah. for both of you, but like, I don't know. I personally felt like he should have come. Being a good partner is going through the hard things with people, even if you don't really want to. Who wants to go to a funeral? No, no one. one. But life is part of death. Think. Death is part of life, rather. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. So I don't know. No, I agree with you. I think that this all kind of culminates down to the reality, and this is just my opinion, that the two of them never really had a relationship that expanded past the surface. I know that they had yeah. conversations. I'm not saying that their relationship wasn't meaningful, but that is a sign to me that like you're not committed to this relationship because you're still really just focused on yourself and your needs and your wants and your boundaries, your limitations, etc. And it sounded like Jason was still putting himself and what he needed, even in just this like small way of, you know, you just had a family member pass and I don't do well with death. So therefore I'm not going to be there. And I feel like when you have someone in your life who really matters to you and like they're your partner, you do what you can to push through those things to show up for them. And he, I just don't think their relationship was necessarily there yet. 
Because yeah. even when she's talking to him about the funeral, she asks him to show up for Richard. Like, that's yeah. your business partner's mother. It's not about her. Yeah. And that's when I have to remind myself that this show is not really about the romance. Mm. It's about family. In those moments when she wants him to show up for Richard, that is when I want him to show up and be like, I'm not here for him. I'm here for you. Because he like denies that he's going to show up for him. And that's when I want it to be like, I'm here for you. And that's when I that's when my like romance reader heart comes out that I'm just like, this is what I want from this. Of but course. I have to remember that like the love stories on Gilmore Girls are just not that strong. Like they're not really truly romantic in my mind. I think that Emily and Richard maybe is the strongest. But well, the I don't think they were written to be as such. I think they were written to have some cynicism attached to them because of who Amy is. But you bring up a really interesting point because this is what I was going to get to at the beginning. You know, you asked me what my opinion was on Jason prior to watching this. Yeah. And I shared with you that I thought that he was kind of a, a mechanism written into the storyline to keep Luke and Lorelai apart. But now after watching it with you, I really do think that part of the purpose of Jason was also to cause a rift in Emily and Richard's relationship, which was really at the hands of Richard himself. But regardless, yeah. Jason was kind of someone <laughs> who fault. expedited that a little bit. Yeah. I think that Jason was also kind of written into the story to show the audience, show Lorelai, that she really does have a built-in organic allegiance to her family. And at the she end of the day, really she's still going to choose her family. Even if it seems like she's choosing a boy, as yeah. Richard kind of lays into her about in After Boom. Like, you don't care about any of this. You just care about your boyfriend. And it's like, you don't even know, my guy. She has sacrificed a lot of the depth and growth of her relationship with Jason in the name of her relationship that she has with you and your wife. Yeah. So I think that it was to kind of bring them closer or at least, again, to show the audience, show us that her allegiance to her parents is not as broken as maybe it once was when we met her in the pilot. Yeah. It, no, I think that's so true. I guess I didn't really fully think of Jason in that way because you immediately come in and you're like, this is a Laurel I love interest. But as we saw from the very jump, he was there as a Richard, like a Richard storyline addition. Um and so I I think that it was for the purpose of family, like what we were saying, is that it seems like based on the fight that Richard and Lorelai have, where it's like, all you care about is your boyfriend. If she goes to see Jason and Jason's like, I'm suing your family. She's like, great, let's do it together. Sign my name. And she's like, no, like, I can't be with someone who's suing my family. And for all intents and purposes, you're like, wouldn't you love to sue your family, my girl? Right now, like, of all times. Don't you, yeah. For emotional damages? Like, isn't this what, like your dream? You're like, yes, sign me up. I'm going to sit behind you in court. But she's like, no, I can't be with someone who's in my family. So as mad as she is at them, like as many times as she goes through all these things with them, this is what people on Patreon were talking about. It's like she always is going to choose them. She's always going to fall behind the Gilmore name. Mm -hmm. But what's really interesting about that is I think it really just proves to us and to them and to her and to everyone that Jason wasn't right because when it comes to the right person, she's willing to pull that pull that back when we get to mid season five. And the whole Luke debacle is like, whoa, like this is when she falls apart because the like breakup with Jason doesn't affect her. At all. I mean, to be fair, the breakup wouldn't affect me either if I was kissing Luke at the end of the breakup. Like, I was getting together with, like, my lifelong friend yeah. who we have gone to friends to lovers. I don't think I would be hard-pressed about Jason ending up in the bathroom and then never leaving. No. Um, <laughs> Not really. But, but it really does It does serve the purpose of us being like, oh, unexpected. You're unexpectedly because she, loyal to your parents. Especially because she's mad at them. And it kind of seems like she's just tricking them into like getting together. And like it's more focused on the two of them and how they're relating to each other than the fact that she's mad at them. And she's and like, she just broke up with her boyfriend. Yeah. Because, not because of them, but, you know, but because it, has, of them. it has to do with them. And that, like you said, really changes in season five. And the circumstances are much different. It's a lot more diabolical, so manipulative, et cetera. And it's <laughs> So then where does that leave you 
when it comes to the question that I asked you before, because you had said that your conclusion about Jason has shifted. Yeah, because I still feel the same about everything is that he kind of is the one that got away. But this is what we talked about, like kind of realized, I guess, in the middle of four is that Jason is Lorelai. They are the exact same person. Like the jokes that they tell, sometimes they're not even talking with each other. They're talking to each other because they're saying each other. Yeah. Like some of the things that he says, like I almost want to do like, did Jason or Lorelai say this? Because like they have the same exact humor. They're bantering at each other with each other. It's just like their sense of humor is the exact same. The way that they react, they react to things is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of their green flags end up as green flags because they're just mirrors of each other. Like, I don't think that Lorelai or Jason need to leave their home to date each other. They could just talk to the mirror Mm -hmm. and that's it. That's all they need because they're just so, so similar that I don't, I don't think it would have ever gone anywhere. I don't think it would have grown. Well, because they're too similar. Yeah. And it's like, I almost feel like maybe that was the purpose Mm -hmm. of like, we just had two people who were like so similar from the same world that it never really was going to work out, Mm. but it feels like it should. Because he feels like he's the one that got away, but it's like he is the one who I am. <laughs> yeah, no, and they're he's no longer around. They're very, very similar, and I think that when we do eventually have an episode about Lorelai and Logan being kind of the same person, <gasps> that kind of goes hand in hand here because yeah. Logan and Jason, as I mentioned earlier, have a lot of similar qualities, which I never thought of before until we had this conversation. But another person that I think Logan goes hand in hand with is Christopher, as we've talked about. So like, there's kind of all these moving pieces with the Gilmore Girls where there are opportunities for them to date um, people who either mirror them or really understand where they're coming from. And whether or not, I think that's a huge question within this fandom, is whether or not those are good and suitable partners for them. And if they understand them more than someone like Luke Jess, Dean, etc., Max Medina, yeah. you know? And so I am inclined to agree with you on that. He can feel like the one that got away, but I just think at the end of the day, they were too similar. Way too similar. And I don't feel like, I feel like as a result of that, of like feeling like they were dating mirrors, like, like we said before, it's very surface level. There's never really any foundation of like, why are you guys together? Why do you guys like each other? Mm-hmm. What's the romance here? Like, what's keeping you moving forward? Because I haven't, like, I haven't zeroed in on any th- reason as to why you guys are together. Do you think like, they had uh, chemistry? Um, I think sometimes it's hard to differentiate chemistry and banter because they have really good banter. Because Chris and Laurel, I have really good banter, too. Mm. But I don't know that, like, I ever felt, like, a moment between them where I was, like, dang, the two of them. Yeah. Like, I never felt that. Well, so that actually leads me into a question I have for you, which is also a question I have for our audience. I know that we've kind of posed this question of whether or not Jason was the one who got away or if he was really someone who was super well suited for her and it just wasn't the right time. But I feel like a lot of people who have such strong feelings about Jason also have strong feelings about Christopher. And I'm curious, if it came down to it, would you prefer for Lorelai to be with Jason or Christopher? And we'll have more to say on that in the next episode. 